finally, in this lecture on mangrove forests, I want to talk to you about the future of these forests. Now, mangrove forests are going to be extremely sensitive to climate change. These, after all, are vegetated communities that live at sea level. So, of course, they're going to be influenced by sea level rise, by elevated levels of carbon dioxide, which might actually enhance their productivity and growth, by elevated temperatures that may give rise to movement of mangroves into more southern, uh, lower temperature areas, by changes in rainfall. After all, they are dependent on freshwater sources as well as on seawater and also in changes in wave and wind. And this, of course, uh, alters the ability for them to establish on some shores. The effects of climate change, so all of these are the direct effects of climate change, but these effects of climate change are going to be influenced also by coastal development. So whether there are dams being built upstream that limit fresh water and sediments being delivered to the coast, whether there's clearing of forests or the construction of sea walls that will limit the movement of mangroves, and we'll look at that in a minute. So mangroves and their, and their response to climate change is really going to be influenced by what people do on the land. Here I want to focus a little bit on how mangroves might respond to sea level rise. They're vulnerable to sea level rise. Some of the predictions are that mangrove fringes will be affected, so the seaward fringe might die back, and that trees will move upslope as tidal inundation reaches further and further up into the terrestrial environment. If we build walls behind mangroves, what might occur is that they become squeezed against the walls as the tide rises, but there is no space for them to move landward. Finally, they could keep up with sea level rise by adding to the soil volume. So the trees basically may be able to hold their position on the coast, even with sea level rise, for at least some time. So just to summarise here, we might expect losses of seaward fringing forests as they are overwhelmed by inundation, so their tolerance of inundation is exceeded. We might see mangrove invasion of salt marsh, which occurs to the landward side of the mangrove. And here in this image, you can see mangroves growing within a salt marsh in southeastern Australia. We might also see the salt marshes and mangroves squeezed against barriers, like in this second image, where the salt marsh is squeezed against this wall that's been made for an aquaculture development. The final point that we talked about was that mangroves may possibly keep up with sea level rise by increasing the elevation of the soil surface relative to sea level rise. And they can do this through sediment deposition, through root growth, where they can add to the soil volume, and also if we can limit the subsidence, which can occur if you withdraw groundwater resources or uh, if there's a lot of um, drying of the sediments. So we might imagine this could occur over time, and it does. So surface elevation, that's the level of the sediment, actually increases as you go through years. And here in the red, you can see a mangrove that is not gaining as much elevation as the stars in the blue. Now, if you're interested in working out how we might make these kinds of measurements or how we make these measurements, then there's a companion video that you can look at where I talk about this process in the field as we're making these kinds of measurements. Now once we have that data, we can combine that with models to really visualise what's going to happen with sea level rise. Now there's a link here I've provided to a link called, to a, a website called Drown Your Town where you can visualise what sea level rise might do to an urban landscape. We can also use models to help us imagine how, how mangrove forests are going to exist in the future. To do this, we've needed a digital elevation model, which is an extremely accurate 
digital representation of the surface of the coast. We need sea level predictions, which are provided by IPCC and other organisations. And we need some knowledge of the vertical accretion and other processes that give rise to that increase in soil volume over time. So this is a small model that we created for an area in Brisbane in South East Queensland. You can see the salt marsh in blue and the mangroves in yellow. At 2050, almost all the salt marshes has gone. Has gone. In 2100, the mangroves have moved into that terrestrial vegetation represented by the green. The urban footprint is red. So we can do these visualisations, we can see what we imagine is going to happen and they can give us suggestions or they give us really help and guidance in planning for the future and how we're going to maintain mangroves in the future. We need to plan. How we can do this is we can secure land for wetland expansion. If we're expecting the mangroves to move in a landward direction with sea level rise, then let's put aside the land so that this can happen. We can remove barriers to landward movement. Bund walls, sea walls, roads, dikes. We can redraw boundaries around wetland reserves as the boundary for now at current sea level may not be appropriate for 50 years time in order to capture the mangrove. We can ensure that sediment supply is maintained and sediment is very important for that increasing soil volume over time and that means thinking about the construction of dams and levees. We can reduce pollution. Pollution is bad for marine organisms and the healthier system that we can maintain, the more likely it is to be able to adapt to climate change. We can reduce unsustainable extraction, so damage and degradation to forests. And finally, we can focus where it's possible and feasible on restoration of ecosystems. What we really want to do here is maintain mangroves for the future and that means maintaining fish, maintaining coastal protection and carbon sequestration into the future.